we're using. Um, we went from the first week with just reaching out to a couple hundred people. Now we're up to reaching over 1,200 people. So it is working. Thank you uh, so much for that. Hey, listen, this morning, if you have a, a child uh, that is of Sunday school ages, uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, uh, the Sunday school lesson, uh, but that's not being broadcast in any way, and so that is by invite. She tried to reach out to everybody and uh, let them know that that's taking place. If you didn't get that invite or you haven't connected with Mrs. Snow yet for Children's Sunday School, uh, please let us know so that uh, she can get you invited and, and be able to teach your child uh, during uh, Children's Sunday School. Well, listen, we're in the series uh, called The Complete Green Letters. Uh, by Miles Stanford. Now, why, I'm going to show you another version of the book. So this one here is just book one of five. And this one is called The Green Letters, Principles of Spiritual Growth. Uh, but if you get the um, complete green letters, then this is just book one of five that's all put together in, in one volume. And uh, so this is another way to purchase it, but this is not the uh, complete green letters. This is just the green letters. So notice the difference in the title. Um, but what we're going to do today uh, is it's just a review lesson, uh, lessons one through six, or chapters one through six in the book. <clears throat> and um, I think since uh, we had uh, Easter vacation this last week and uh, with Easter going on and maybe we've forgotten what we've learned. So it's always good to review and uh, the Bible tells us that a faithful pastor puts people in remembrance of the things that he's taught them. So chapter one was about faith. Let me share a few thoughts uh, about faith here. Um, first of all, there's um, the absolute necessity of faith. Hebrews 11 uh, verse 6 says, without faith it is impossible to please God. Since you're tuning in this morning, I'm under the assumption that you want to please God. Now, do you have faith? Uh, faith for salvation and faith for growing as a Christian. Uh, the faith which leads to salvation is Ephesians 2, 8, and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works, lest anyone should boast. So it's not by works that we're saved, it's by faith. Only faith pleases God. Uh, Titus uh, chapter 3 uh, verse 5 tells us, and I'm just going to paraphrase it, that uh, we are saved according to his mercy through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, but it's not works of righteousness uh, that we have done uh, either in that particular passage. And so uh, it is through faith alone um, that we are saved, and that is what pleases God and brings us into a relationship where God can call us his child. Now, as a child of God, then we need to continue growing in that faith. So, uh, Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says this, As you have received Christ, so continue in him. Well, how did we receive Christ? Well, by faith. Uh, so how do we grow? Well, we continue to grow by faith. Uh, the Galatian believers were taught this, that uh, Paul asked them a question. He said, um, who has bewitched you, who's tricked you, that you should turn to uh, another gospel, uh, that you should turn to another way? He said, how did you receive the Holy Spirit, by the hearing of faith or by the works of the law? Uh, his question was, then how are you going to grow? Are you going to grow by the Holy Spirit uh, giving you uh, faith to believe, or are you going to grow by trying to be uh, zealous religiously through your own effort, through your own works? Well, obviously Paul's uh, comment to them is that only uh, by walking in the Spirit, by faith, do we grow as a Christian. And so we need to understand that it takes faith to please God. So on page three in the complete green letters, he says the aim of this book is to uh, carefully bring out some of the more important principles of spiritual growth to help the reader build upon a solid foundation in Christ. He can have no other. 
And so uh, Christ is our foundation. Paul tells the Corinthian believers, no other foundation can any man lay than that which is laid down, which is Christ. So Christ is our only foundation that we can build upon, and we received him by faith. Uh, one of the uh, great difficulties in growing by faith as a Christian is uh, sometimes we think about the probabilities of life and what could happen. And we need to be grounded upon the certainties of faith, not the possibilities of life. So he goes on to quote, he says, Then two probabilities are the big temptation when it comes to exercising faith. Many people are willing to believe regarding those things that seem probable to them. Faith has nothing to do with probabilities. Faith is, is, is fact. It's grounded in the person of God, not in possibilities of life. And so then he goes on to say this about faith. Once we begin to reckon or count on facts, our Father begins to build us up in the faith. And so we need to uh, just build ourselves up in faith, uh, not in probabilities, not in possibilities, but in faith. And so faith is dependence upon God, and uh, this dependence begins uh, when self-dependence ends. So we cannot trust ourselves uh, to grow as a Christian. Have you ever been so amazed or discouraged after you've committed a sin as a Christian? How could I have done that? Well, that amazement in and of itself is self-dependence, not faith. You were trusting in yourself not to sin, not God's power to work through you. All right, so that was a review of chapter 1. Now, chapter 2, uh, if you'll take your Bibles and open up to 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, uh, 2 Peter 3.18 says this, But grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory both now and forever. Amen. So growing in grace. Uh, it takes time to grow. Um, just as you watch your children grow, it takes decades before they get out of the house, right? But it takes time for them to grow, and there are different stages. There's the infant stage, and then the toddler stage, and then the preschool stage, uh, the early elementary stage, and then the awkward junior high stage, and then that high school stage. And uh, by the time they're high school, they're grown adults. But it just took time for that to take place. You realize that it took Moses uh, 80 years, uh, 40 years in the land of Egypt, um, before he came to trust God. And then 40 years of growth in the wilderness, um, living with his father-in-law Jethro, and uh, God finally culminated that 40 years with his uh, visit to Moses on the, the mountain, and Moses went up to see the burning bush. And then it was another 40 years for the children of Israel as they went through the wilderness. And so think about uh, the time that it takes. Uh, the Apostle Paul took at least three years uh, to grow as a Christian. Uh, he was discipled uh, by Barnabas and encouraged, but then uh, he had to spend time in the desert. And then it wasn't for decades later that he actually became a well-known apostle in the church. And so it takes time to grow. And uh, so if God is not in a rush to build us as Christians, would you allow yourself some time to grow? Now, I'm not saying make excuses for you know, your lack of growth. I'm just saying realize that uh, as natural processes of growth take place, so there are spiritual processes of growth. Uh, Paul told the Corinthian believers that they were babes in Christ. And uh, then there were those that were more mature. He told the, the Hebrew believers, let's move on from the principles of Christ and let's go to the more advanced principles. And so there are stages in your Christian life uh, where you're growing. You many times start out and you don't know anything. And then as you uh, live the Christian life, as you read the Word of God, and as you depend upon God in faith, uh, you become a much more uh, rooted, established, and grounded believer in the Lord. So it just takes time. And so uh, he goes on to quote here on page six in the complete green letters, and I went too far. It says here that uh, most believers have difficulty in realizing, facing up to the inexorable fact that God does not hurry in his development of the Christian life. 
He's working from eternity and for eternity. And um, so another man says this, spiritual renewal is a gradual process. All growth is progressive. And uh, the finer the organism, the longer the process. So God is, is not in a hurry. It's, so he's not uh, trying to build uh, maple trees. He's trying to build oak trees. And there's a difference in, in how they grow and how they last. Uh, maple trees not so long. Oak trees hundreds of years. Uh, if you would, just take your Bibles. Let's go over to the book of Philippians chapter 3. And um, we'll look here at uh, verses 12 and 14. Philippians 3, 12, uh, the Apostle Paul says, Not as though I had already attained, either were made perfect, but I follow after that if I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So even an apostle says he hasn't arrived. Uh, he's still growing. Uh, verse 14, he says, I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So he's continually trying to grow uh, as a Christian. He's going forward. All right, so that is uh, chapter 2 on time. So chapter 1 is faith. Have you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by faith? Have you turned away from what you're trusting in and turning to Christ and receiving him by faith? That turning is called repentance. And the belief or trust in Christ is the faith. And so God commands all men everywhere to repent. And uh, he's given us repentance towards God and faith in Christ. Then as a Christian, uh, do you realize that it just takes time to grow? And um, don't try to put more pressure on yourself uh, depending upon what stage you're in. Uh, you're not expected to be a Bible teacher if you're a brand new Christian. As a matter of fact, uh, you're not supposed to be a pastor if you're a brand new Christian, so you're supposed to be tried and tested. Uh, so there are people that uh, are trying to grow in Christ. All right, chapter 3 is acceptance. Uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. It sounds like some people have joined us here on Google Hangouts. Thank you for doing that. If you could please be sure that your microphone is muted on Google Hangouts, that would be appreciated. All right, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you feel at peace with God? Now, it doesn't have to be a feeling, but if you realize here, once again, faith is fact. Notice what verse 1 says. Being justified by faith, we have peace. So faith brings peace with God and uh, acceptance. And so uh, acceptance based uh, by God based solely upon the work of Christ, not human effort. Um, and so we need to know that we're accepted based upon the merits of Jesus Christ by our Heavenly Father. I want us to go over to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Having predestined us to the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. So our acceptance is found in the fact that we have union with Christ, that we're in Christ Jesus. Not that we can perform religious deeds or that we're growing as a Christian. We don't need performance-based Christian growth. We need faith-based Christian growth. Where we're working from faith. Um, the faith that we have an acceptance with God. Um, there were nine paradoxes in this particular chapter um, that were set up. So let me see if I can find those real quick and just uh, read those to you. Um, that are really important for us to understand. All right, so here are the nine paradoxes in the chapter. To refuse to make resolutions and vows. All right. I'll never do that again. Well, that is the flesh, okay? 
to believe and to consent to be loved while unworthy. That's the great secret. Hey, listen, we're never going to perform enough to be worthy. Uh, our acceptance is found in the fact that Jesus Christ himself is the beloved son and he is worthy. To expect to be blessed, though realizing more and more the lack of worth. Uh, our worth is in Christ Jesus, not in ourselves. And God is going to bless us because of his son. To rely on God's chastening, child training, uh, as a mark of his kindness. Is your conscience bothered by sin? Some people think that that's a, an evidence that they're not saved, but rather that can be an evidence that you are saved because uh, whom the Father loves, he chastens and he scourges. And the scourging many times is the conviction by the Holy Spirit. To hope to be better, hence acceptable, is to fail to see yourself in Christ alone. To be disappointed with yourself is to have believed in yourself. To be discouraged is unbelief as to God's purpose and plan of blessing for you. To be proud is to be blind, for we have no standing before God in ourselves. The lack of divine blessing, therefore, comes from unbelief and not failure of devotion. And so those are the paradoxes we need to believe our acceptance is found in Christ. All right. So that was chapter 3, moving quickly. Uh, chapter 4 is purpose. What is God's purpose? This is found in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Romans 8, 28 and 29. Now you'll, you'll hear Romans chapter 8 all the time, verse 28. Uh, it says, And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Uh, but that's usually where we stop. Notice the rest of the verse. To those who are called according to his purpose. All right, well, what is God's purpose that makes all things work together for good? Well, it says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. God's purpose is to predestinate you to be uh, conformed to the image of his Son. So good things and bad things work together to get you to be more like Christ. Listen, let the crisis that we're in right now bring you to a, uh, a, a stronger growth, a stronger faith in who God is. He is using this to, to grow you as a Christian, to put your trust and dependence more in Him. And so God, that is God's purpose for your life. Um, God has uh, done something here. He's, he's put His image back on the earth and He's making us into His image. Now, I sent these notes uh, to you uh, on an email about 7.30 this morning, so check your email. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip on up to chapter 5 now, uh, but God's purpose is to make us like his son. Uh, chapter 5 was entitled Preparation. God sets up our desire to grow in the Christ life through need. Uh, have you ever been so frustrated at yourself as a Christian? Uh, the scripture talks about our need of, of growth. Uh, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And uh, I like one of his quotes here. He says, now it so happens that God's basic ingredient for growth is need. The reason our Father creates and allows needs in our lives is to turn us from all that is outside of Christ, uh, centering us in his Son alone. Not I, but Christ, the Apostle Paul says. Uh, do we see our need to grow? Uh, sooner or later, the Holy Spirit begins to make us answer uh, our basic problem as believers, the infinite difference between self and Christ. And so uh, it is very possible for a man, having received justifying faith in Christ, to come to the realization that he needs sanctifying faith in Christ. Uh, Charles Trumbull said, The effortless life is not the willless life. We use our will to believe and receive, but not to exert effort in trying to accomplish what only God can do. Um, so there's a difference here between uh, trying to grow as a Christian through self-effort, through discipline, and then receiving by faith what God 
uh, has for you, but he puts us in a position of need. And that need is that of hunger and uh, the Holy Spirit showing us that we need to trust him. All right, and then uh, the last chapter, chapter 6 here, is complete in him. Uh, Colossians 2, verses 9 and 10 says this, For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Hey, listen, the moment that you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you got everything that you needed from God. Otherwise, you wouldn't be complete. But you are complete in him. Um, and so we're not just a, a being made by God, but also begotten of God. We talked about uh, the process of a seed being planted. Um, it has received from its parent the genetic code uh, of the plant that it is. Uh, so right now I've got some plants that are uh, in little uh, paper pots and uh, they're growing. And uh, I know that there's uh, yellow squash and, and uh, zucchini uh, that are, that are going to be going and butternut squash. And so uh, those are going to turn out exactly what the genetic code of that seed is. And when we're in Christ Jesus, we receive... Uh, complete spiritual DNA. Therefore, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are become new. Uh, notice what uh, Peter says in 1 Peter 1, 23, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Hey, listen, just put yourself under the conditions to grow. Uh, be in the word. And uh, realize that the Word of God is what created faith in you in the first place. And the Word of God is what will continue to develop and grow your faith as a Christian. But you are complete in Christ. And uh, so the, this is the Word of Christ. And you can grow as a Christian. And so he goes on to close here in chapter 6, uh, page 26. Only those who have sought to grow by effort and failed are in the position to appreciate the fact that God is the aggressor in the realm of development. Um, how can we put this biblically? Well, he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ, Philippians 1.6. Uh, it is uh, God who puts in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure, uh, Philippians 2.14. Uh, so he is uh, putting the desire, the will in your life to grow in the grace and image of of his son Jesus Christ. That's your uh, purpose in life, to be like Jesus. Let's go ahead and close our time in prayer. Now, Father, thank you that uh, we can grow uh, by faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, help us to understand that it does take time, but uh, we can grow. Lord, help us to realize our acceptance in Christ Jesus. Help us to realize our need of um, pursuing Christ through faith and not uh, the, the self-life. Help us to realize that uh, you prepare us, and Lord, all things are working together for good to those that love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. We ask this now in Jesus Christ's name.